All right, let's move on to GPA. All right, GPA miss. If I don't have a 4.0, I can't get into PT school. Baloney. Don't believe it for a second. Okay. Um, I have a YouTube testimonial of someone who has a 2.45 GPA who we got accepted into multiple programs from across the country. Now, this is a cumulative GPA. Okay. So, um, again, a lot of applicants, they think if your cumulative GPA is trash, there's no hope. I'm going to show you that that's not the case. Okay. Um, another myth. If you tank your freshman year and your GPA was really not good, there's no way you can get into PT school. More baloney. Don't believe it. Don't trust the people who are telling you this. A lot of the times these are pre-professional advisors that are like, oh, no, PT school is just too competitive. There's no way you're going to be able to get in because you did poorly in your freshman year. Focus on what you can control, what you can change, how you can make things improve. If a program lists their accepted class GPA, that number is a cutoff. Again, it's not. It's an average. It's an average. Okay. They may have a cutoff. Most of the time, it's a 3.0 is the cutoff. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean it's for cumulative. Most of the time, that's for pre rec GPA. Okay. Schools only care about GPA. More baloney. Don't believe it. Schools are starting to see that more and more factors contribute to an applicant being successful in PT school besides just their GPA. And also, more importantly, they're finding more and more factors that allow them to be successful um, when they're physical therapists. And that's arguably much more important is, do you have the people skills? Do you have the ability to persevere through challenges and different things like that? Are you committed to causes outside of school that show that you can consistently stick with something? These are the things that matter more to schools. Um, then that are starting to matter more to schools, I should say. There's also this other myth, and this has been kind of propagated in the pre-PT community, of your GPA doesn't matter, okay? Um, I, I think that the phrase of like, I am not my GPA, like you are so much more than your GPA. But guys, your GPA does matter. Like we are doing ourselves a disservice as a profession if we are dumbing down the the requirements to get into our school to be competitive and to be successful, if we are dumbing it down, people are going to take us less seriously. We should be actively engaged in trying to be the best that we can be as people. And if we're just settling or we're saying like, ah, oh, this is too hard. I don't want to work on that. Then you might need to, you should probably go check out a different job because PT is, is tough. It's tough. Okay. How does honors influence your chance of acceptance? Um, that is a great question. Um, so Madison, I think honors in general, you're looking at, they're going to see that you can handle a more rigorous course load. Um, so, and it goes into effect. Like sometimes they're weighted differently. The honors classes are, um, you should reach out to each program individually to see how they factor in honors classes. Because in general, I would say if you do well in an honors class, that obviously is going to look better than doing well in the regular version of that class. Um, is that something that you have to hang your hat on and you have to be in only honors classes? No, um, but it is a feather in your cap if it's something that you can swing and you feel like it would be beneficial for you. I really have a hard time for applicants just doing things just to be competitive in PT school. Um, who is it gonna help you develop it as, as a person? Is it gonna make you better? Is it gonna force you to better master the material? Then yes, I would go for it. If you're just doing it just to make PT schools happy, then I don't know. That's that's hard for me. Um, I want to go back to Ritu's question. Of, is it okay to apply to programs that just started and does this make a difference? So if you're applying to a program that's brand new, right? The danger that we have there is we don't have any data to know how they are performing on the licensure examination. But you better well believe that that school is going to do everything they can to help you be successful to do well on the licensure. because. Your success determines their success. PT schools are only as good as the scores on the MPTE. And now you're getting more and more transparency with programs providing their first time pass rate. Um, if you go on the Federation of State Boards of Physical Therapy, the FSBPT, there's documents on there that show you the first time pass rates for all DPT programs. And you can look and see, you know what? These are the programs that are really preparing their students well. So. I, I think that's a question, Ritu, that you need to go in and you need to ask the program is, what are you going to do as a program to ensure that your applicants are going to pass the licensure examination the first time? If they give you a satisfactory answer, I don't think that's as big of, uh, of an issue. Because remember, always remember, the only reason we're going to PT school 
is to get our license. After that, like people are like, oh, I want to learn everything I can. That's true. You're going to learn a lot in PT school. But guess what? After you get out of school, you can go to con ed courses. You get to choose whatever the heck you want to specialize in or get it like a niche um, skill set developed. And then you can really develop yourself as a clinician in a way that is going to focus on what's relevant to what you want to do and the patients that you're seeing. Um, so I hope that answers our questions. I wanted to take some time for that. Okay. So looking at these numbers right here, um, I had to kind of, to make the images bigger, I had to cut off a little bit of the graphics. This is again from our most recent applicant data report that we have, looking at the mean undergraduate cumulative GPA for PCCAS applicants, okay? So the blue bar is for everyone who applied and the gray bar is for everyone who was accepted, okay? You see here, we've got the 3.4 to almost a 3.6 range is what we're looking at for that. Um, the average is a 3.5. Again, does that mean it's a cutoff? No. Please calm down. Please relax. Don't freak out. Okay. This is not a cutoff. It's an average, but it does give us information. Okay. I, like I've mentioned, I've had applicants with extremely low prereq or cumulative GPAs get accepted to programs because, as we're going to show in a couple slides, they found programs that looked at prereq and last 60 credit hour GPA. Okay. All right. Mean combined math and science, which Math and science GPA is more or less, it's going to be your close to what your prereq GPA is. Um, so those numbers dipped slightly. You're looking at a 3.2 for all of those applicants who applied. And the number of the average for those who are accepted was a 3.4. So not a cutoff, but it gives us some information to help us make informed decisions. Okay, so here are your action items. Guys, you need to know your numbers. When you get to this stage of the application, if we are going to be targeted and sophisticated with our approach of where we're applying, you need to know. Cumulative GPA is pretty easy. Just go look at um, an unofficial transcript. Most schools, you can pull this up within a matter of seconds on their student portal, okay? The one that's gonna take a little bit more legwork is calculating your prereq GPA, okay? So, and what is that? Like every, each school is different. I tell people, this is your core prereq GPA. Anatomy and physiology, chemistry, physics, bio, stats, general psych, okay? That is your core number. Yes, there's going to be some other programs that require like exercise physiology or calculus or um, uh, medical terminology class, like whatever, right? So, but as a core, if you've got anatomy, phys, chem, physics, bio, stats, and psych, that number is more or less going to give you a snapshot of where you're at, okay? So you need to go calculate that number. You can go online. There's a million different um, GPA calculators. Just plug in the course, the grade you got, how many credits it's worth, and then plug and chug that in for all those courses I just listed. That gives you your prereq GPA. Okay. Last 60 credit hours is pretty easy. Just look at the last two years of coursework that you have since most applicants on uh, most students are going to take 12 to 15 credits if they're a full-time student. Okay. <clears throat> so as far as that goes, Look at your last graded 60 credit hours, and that's real easy. You can just take the average GPA, so your GPA for each of the last four semesters or uh, the last 60 credit hours that you have earned, and then average those numbers together. That gives you your last 60 credit hours, okay? Pretty straightforward. And then do some what-if calculating to see if you can boost your prereq and your last 60 credit hour GPA. Arguably, your prereqs is the easiest one to calculate because most programs, if you are taking a course and let's say you did poorly in anatomy, okay? I'm actually gonna give you an example for this, okay? So let's say you took anatomy and physiology your freshman year and you did horrible in anatomy, okay? So this is, a, this is an example of me going to one of these general um, GPA calculators and putting in my stats. So the GPA right now for the, the current prereq GPA for me as an applicant is a 3.15. Not great, right? Not super good. But if I retake courses, most of the time programs will take the higher grade and they will factor that in. So it replaces a poor grade. Of course, that's not going to change your cumulative GPA, but it will change your prereq GPA, which is very, that is much more accurate 
for a PT school to determine like how well you're going to do with their content because prereqs are there to help see how you're going to do with the future content you're going to be taking in PT school. Okay, so let's just see if they were to if we were to retake anatomy and physiology. Okay, and I'm not even talking getting like an A plus, but if we took that four credits of a C minus and we turn it into a B plus. And then we got an A minus in uh, phys. That is a huge change. That makes you much more competitive. Then you're right in line with the applicants who were accepted with the average um, math and science GPA, right? Look at that. You're right in line. And that's taking retaking two classes. So many of you may be kind of on the fence right now about like, should I retake this class? Should I retake this class? If you have time over the summer and you can retake it before you submit your application, I would do it personally. Um, and that's prereq classes, prereq classes. Uh, I got a question here. Let me pull this up. Does last 60 credit hours include retakes? Last 60 credit hours is last 60 credit hours. Plain and simple. So you literally just go back, reach you, and you look at, okay, these are my last 60 graded credits. What's my GPA for that? But the last 60 credit hours is pretty straightforward. Prereq GPA, you have a little bit of nuance to it because if you're retaking classes, then you obviously need to see, you know, um, that's a great question to ask a program if after you start reaching out to them, say, hey, I'm considering retaking this class and this class. If I perform well, will you factor in my prereq GPA as um, the highest the highest grade gets factored in or do both of the grades get factored in? Okay. Um, and most programs are gracious and understand that prereq classes can be hard. And so they'll accept the retake grade um, instead of averaging them. That's not every program. And this is where you guys have to go in and do your research. Um, because every program is different, even year over year programs will change their requirements. And so we have to reach out and ask and say, Hey, what are you guys doing about this situation? 